NBA 2K22, computer defense has been so good, why play on ball and get caught slipping, right? Well, with this video, I'm going to show you how rewarding on ball defense is this year on current and next gen consoles and help improve your stick skill ability to be able to shut down ball handlers and receive the advantages only guys who play on ball will enjoy. And if you like the content, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't for more NBA 2K22 videos. I'm Chris from Sports Gamers Online, and all right, let's get it. First off, let's go over the basics. And the first thing you want to be familiar with and always be holding is the left trigger on your controller, which puts you in a defensive stance. You do this to keep your head facing forward when you move around and need to change directions quickly. And hold the left trigger also allows you to not overrun ball handlers as easily as you move side to side. And depending on the type of ball handler you're facing as they come up the court, I typically set up in my stance right around the three point line if they can shoot and between the three point and the paint area if they're struggle shooters. And matching up with the ball handler around the perimeter, you want to make sure you're always aligned directly in front of them and keeping a consistent depth as you track them. So you aren't out of position just by following them around. If they go left, you go left. If they go right, you go directly right. And once they hit the sidelines is when you want to retreat back a bit. It's easy to get caught here and play too far up and bam, they just beat you sideline. And the speed at which you can move side to side is directly tied to the player's lateral quickness rating. Bigs usually have a very low rating in this category with somebody like Kawhi Leonard obviously has a really high rate so he can shuffle sideways faster than most. And another button you want to be familiar with is you always want to be holding the right stick up to contest in most situations. Instead of playing the guessing game of when he's going to shoot, it's best to hold this as much as possible when you're defending the ball. And lastly, you want to get used to hitting the sprint button, which is done by holding the right trigger and the left stick in the direction you want to go. And you're only going to use this when you are straight beat off the dribble, which I'll go over more in detail shortly. Another key thing to remember when you're in a stance is knowing you don't have to react to every dribble move the ball handler does. Guys will be dribbling the place and sometimes, come on, we all do it. The defender will slide back and forth all over the place and he hasn't gone anywhere. You don't want that. Something I've been doing for a bit is I don't even touch the left stick after I position myself. Now sure my right stick is ready to contest always and my thumb is hovering over the left stick, but literally not touching the left stick improved my discipline until I needed to move instead of biting on the first move he does. I'm basically inviting him to make contact. Now, as far as making contact with the ball handler, the strength rating plays a big part in winning and losing these interactions and how much resistance will occur. All the elite rim runners in the NBA are super difficult to stop in part because they all have high strength ratings for their positions. In the past 2K, I liked to use a Bruce Bowen because he had a super high strength rating and he was listed at a point guard, so that was a benefit. And he will body them up frequently whenever somebody tried to drive by him. And once you initiate that collision, you want to continue to hold the left stick in between the ball handler and the hoop to wall them off until the body of animation ends. And the larger point of holding the left stick in between the ball handler and the hoop, and this has helped me a lot as a defender is as an on-ball defender, you want to guard the castle as best you can. Obviously, the castle is the hoop. And the spots you want to guard like your life depended on it are if you're looking directly from the middle, all across the free throw line or inside the elbows. And when you're on the wing and sidelines, it's the low block and the elbow. These spots are important because this is where their animations can trigger and have uncontested layups. They can cause fouls and kickouts. So if you beat them here, you could cause a lot of super contested shots or prevent their animation from triggering altogether. The trick is, of course, guarding the three in mid range while getting back in time to wall them off before they get there. But knowing this is where you need to go can help give you a target to aim for when they beat you off the dribble. Multiple instances I would lose the ball handling and just run to that spot and force them into a wild shot when they thought they were good because I knew where that animation would likely trigger. Also knowing no matter what they're doing you need to beat them to this spot to prevent your defense from collapsing helps you react faster when you're beat because you can better judge when it's time to get out of your stance and into a straight out sprint which again you hold the right trigger and left stick to do so. And when you're faced with this situation, your only goal is to run to the hoop as fast as you can to trigger some kind of contested shot. All of this can happen in an instant, but practicing and knowing what you need to do, you can consistently force players into contested shots that they weren't expecting. 
And lastly, guys are predictable. Use it to your advantage. The most obvious direction they can go will oftentimes be the direction they will go. And if you're using a 2K view, you can see it too. So use that to anticipate their next move before they make it and get some cheap steals. So all right, sports gamers, hope this video was able to help you out. And if you like the content we provide, make sure to subscribe to Sports Gamers Online for more NBA 2K22 content. And once you're with us, hit that bell icon at the bottom so you don't miss anything we put out. All right, people, I'm Chris. Thank you all for watching, and be good, y'all.